So there's been a lot of reviews going around about the Atomos Ninja 5. We're here today to answer the real question. What do we do with it? What up YouTube? I am Sean Arona and welcome back to Stuck in Love Films where we are creative 100% of the time. We're here to talk about the Atomos Ninja 5, basically all the things you need to make it work, the settings that you can use during shooting to make your job easier, and just kind of get a feel for what it's all about. So the first thing is, how do we set it up? All right, so here's some essentials that you'll need in order to get started with the Atomos Ninja 5. You will need a camera, you will need an HDMI cord to connect to the camera. You will need a solid state drive. You will need a solid state drive reader. And you will need a magic arm. So let's talk specifics for a second. For the SSD that you need to use with the Atomos, it needs to be a G Technology Atomos Master Caddy. Now these basically are SSDs that have cases that are designed specifically to slide into Atomos recorders and products. If you get a regular SSD, there are ways to buy just the cases for the master caddies, and you actually can put them in the empty case and be able to use whichever size SSD you want. Just make sure that the SSD has a fast write speed and is capable of recording 4K footage. And if you're recording to SSDs, you're definitely gonna need one of these. It's an SSD to USB cord. However, I don't highly recommend these, like they work, but I've had a few fail on me and I've even had a friend like lose a bunch of footage from a project because this thing malfunctioned. Um, what I recommend is getting some kind of SSD dock. Uh, so just a device that is just an SSD card reader and that will be way more reliable. Other specific thing. So this thing is an HDMI cord that is specifically from Atomos and it's designed in a way that's actually really good for using with cameras. So like the coil helps, you know, manage the cord and everything, but there's a huge but on this one. This particular model was 20 bucks off of B&H and it does not handle 4K at 60 frames per second from your camera to the recorder. So if you're planning on shooting that, don't get this. There is a specific HDMI cord designed for 4K at 60 frames per second by Atomos, but that one is $100. I don't wanna spend $100 on an HDMI cord. Just get, this one right here works fine. It does 4K up to 60 frames per second from your camera to the recorder, and this was like eight bucks at Walmart. Let me show you guys how to set up your GH5 to put out the HDMI signal to your Atomos recorder. First, go to menu, go to the second menu system, go to the second menu option, go to HDMI record output, uh, you can leave display information off because if you put that on there and you record from it, you will actually be recording the info display of your screen from the camera onto your final footage. So leave that off. Leave down convert off if you want to, you know, still use the 4K footage, which we do. HDMI recording control, you can hit on. Now this one is a little tricky. It's a LUT HDMI display. Basically, if you don't have any LUTs, this will send a baked in image on top of your log information to the camera. But if you're not shooting log and you're not, and you don't need a LUT, I would leave this off. But the, the one, the tricky thing about this is it does bake in the image. So just make sure you know that and that it's not just a display option. If you send this information to the Atomos, it will be recording with the LUT on there. The last option down here, if you want to get that 10-bit 4K 60 frames per second footage that we all want, 
we need to go all the way to 422 10-bit. You're going to hit enter. It's going to say that you cannot record to a memory card with this setting and the HDMI is connected. Do you want to proceed? So that just means like if you're trying to record to the SD cards and the monitor in this particular mode, you can't do that. So we're going to hit yes. So the last thing we want to do is pick the frame rate and resolution we want to shoot at. So right now I have it at 4K2398, but if but now we have the capability to shoot all the way up to 60 frames per second. So we can select that if we want to. And now we have 10-bit 4K422 straight from the camera. First thing you want to do is screw the magic arm onto your camera. Then screw the Ninja 5 onto the other side of the magic arm. Lock it in place. Go ahead and put a battery on the Ninja 5 or use your power supply to plug it directly into AC power. Go ahead and slide your Atomos SSD into the Ninja 5 and take one end of the HDMI cord, plug it into your HDMI out of your camera. Then plug in the other end of the HDMI into the input HDMI port of the Ninja 5. All right guys, so let's turn on the Ninja 5. All right, so then the main menu will pop up. Okay, so now you can see your settings up here. We're recording at Ultra HD 4K at 23.98 frames per second. We've got the record format that will be going to the SSD drive that we can look at. And it tells you your codec. We're shooting in ProRes. Right now we're shooting in LT, but you can also change this to ProRes 422. ProRes HQ, which is the highest quality and uh, is recommended if you want to get the most out of this. You can also change from ProRes to DNHR. You've got HQ, HQX, LB, and SQ. If you're more of a run and gun type of shooter, I would suggest using the LT. It actually tells you how long up here you have. Uh, you've got an hour and 38 minutes of footage in LT, but if you go to HQ, you have 44 minutes and 55 seconds um, of 4K footage. And then you've got 422, which gives you an hour and eight minutes. Uh, so now we've got record, which of course will record straight to the SSD that you put in. We've got playback, so you can see what you've recorded earlier. When you hit this button, it kind of goes to a black screen and then comes up with the last shot that you took. And then you can pause it. And to go back to the menu, just hit record again, and it'll go back into record mode. For monitor, basically this is when you're getting ready to shoot. Hit monitor and then you've got your audio levels here. You've got your waveform monitor here. Uh, your battery right there, and you even have the amount of time left of recording right here in the corner. And of course, your time code down here. All right, let's go back to the regular menu. So we have a lot of menu options here. Here, I'll tell you the ones that you really need to worry about. This one is your waveform monitor here. Basically, it's a good way of keeping track of the amount of light in your image. All right, now the next one, we've got some scopes, RGB. So you can see the, the red, blues, and greens of your image and very similar, just keeping track of the amount of light and seeing, you know, keeping track of the colors of your image. Then you've got your scopes here and focus peaking, which is one of my absolute favorites. So that way you can keep track of what's in focus. It'll highlight if your camera doesn't already put out focus peaking, this monitor will add that for you. So that way you know you're in focus. You don't have to check. You don't even have to punch in if you don't want to. It gives you a lot of control over the focus peaking. So if you go over here, you can actually change the color of the focus peaking to blue, purple, and what's really cool is you can actually show how strong you want the focus peaking. So right now I have it on the highest so you can see it pretty well, but you can make it a little bit less intense on your eye and, and that way 
it's not obscuring the image too much. All right guys, the next one is zebra stripes. So it'll show you the brightest and most blown out parts of the image. That way you can keep track of making sure that you have all the detail in your image and then you're not losing any. And you can even control the intensity of your zebra stripes right here. And then we've got false color, which personally I don't use. But basically the brightest parts of the image you'll see right here are red and the darkest parts are purple, so you can actually keep track of your lights and shadows that way. And then we've got a monochrome setting right here. So if you're like me, you're kind of wondering, how do I get LUTs onto this recorder? Because there's no SD card slot, there's no USB cord, there's an HDMI cord, but we know what that's for. And then it hit me, it has an SSD card slot. So just take your SSD, take your reader, plug it straight into your computer, and open it up. Find the LUTs that you want to use. So maybe you've bought these, maybe you've made them yourself. Drag those onto the SSD. Now they're on the SSD card. Slide that into your recorder. And now that you've slid the SSD into the recorder, you now have access to the LUTs that you put on there. So now that you've got the LUTs loaded onto your SSD, you can access them through this folder right here, and it'll show you. See, I've got Abyss, Autumn, Cinema Log, Filmic Log, uh, and we've got a regular log to Rec. 709. Now, to add it to one of these empty slots, let's pick seven over here. Now, you have seven selected. You can go back to that menu. You can choose Emerald and double tap it, and it'll start loading the LUT onto that setting. So now we've got an Emerald LUT on this. If you want to record with the LUT on, go ahead and click on the LUT that you want. So there, there here's one of my favorite LUTs. Go to record, go to uh, hit during recording, and you can exit out of this. And now that that's on, you just hit record. Let's let that record for a second, stop it, and hit playback. And it'll take you to your playback and you'll see exactly what you've baked into your image. Damn, that's intense. All right, so instead of during recording, we're gonna take that off completely. We're not even gonna put during output. We're just going to have this LUT on. All right, now just hit record. Let's let that go for a second. All right, let's stop it. So I've taken the LUT off for a second. Uh, we just recorded with that LUT displayed, so let's see what we got in the actual recording. Now we have log picture profile footage, but we use the LUT to display what it could look like later. And that way you, you can get your lighting right, you can get your exposure right during shooting, but your image will still retain all the detail in the highlights and shadows when you go back into post. Let's go back to the main menu for a second and go back to settings. If you go to display, this is where you can really control how bright of an image that you're getting and kind of control like what the monitor is outputting to your eye. So you've got backlight here so you can really brighten it up if you're outside. Right now we're inside so I'm keeping it pretty low. You can add lift. You've, you've got gamma here. And you've got gain. Alright guys, so I hope that helped you kind of get started. I will be doing a review to kind of just give my opinions on this recorder once I've used it a little bit more and, you know, talk about, you know, how it is as a monitor, how well it does as a recorder. If you guys have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, please comment below and let me know and maybe I'll answer some of those questions in the review. If you like this video and you want to see more, please hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. I will have more videos coming out soon, and just remember, it's not about the gear, it's about you 
and what you can do with it. I'll see you guys in the next one.